The series of muscles that help us to move are known as the muscular system. There are actually three types of muscles. Skeletal muscle is the muscle that's attached to the bones. This is the type of muscle we're talking about when we talk about the muscular system. But we also have smooth muscle, this lines hollow tubes and organs in the body, and cardiac muscle, which is found in the wall of the heart. All muscle functions in movement. Whenever muscles contract or shorten, something moves. Skeletal muscle helps us maintain our posture and stabilizes joints. All muscles generate heat when they contract. As we look at a skeletal muscle, each individual muscle cell is known as a muscle fiber, and each individual muscle cell is surrounded by a connective tissue covering known as the endomyceum. Muscle fibers are bundled into groups called fascicles, and fascicles are wrapped in more connective tissue known as a perimyceum. The muscle itself is made up of a number of fascicles bound together by another connective tissue covering known as the epimyceum. Fibers from the endomyceum, perimyceum, and epimyceum come out at the end of the muscle and form the tendon. The tendon is what attaches the muscle to the bones. Muscle cells are called muscle fibers. They're long cylindrical cells. They extend the entire length of the muscle that they're in. The cell membrane gets a new name. It's called a sarcolemma. Skeletal muscle cells are one of the few cells in the body that has more than one nucleus. We say they are multinucleate. They're filled with cytoskeletal elements known as myofibrils. And skeletal muscle has a striped appearance to it, so we say that it has striations. As we look at skeletal muscle microscopically, here we see several long cylindrical cells. The sarcolemma is the cell membrane of each cell and these dark spots in each cell are the nuclei, so there's more than one nucleus in each cell. You can also see the faint stripes to the muscles. These are the striations. The myofibrils are bundles of protein fibers that are the organelles for contraction within the muscle cell. The sarcomeres is the special arrangement of myofibrils. These are the units that contract to shorten the muscle. The myofibrils are packed with myofilaments. Myofilaments are proteins. Thick filaments are composed of the protein myosin, and thin filaments are composed of the protein actin. These fibers overlap, and that's what gives the striped appearance to the muscle cell. This is one muscle cell or muscle fiber. Each muscle fiber is filled with many of these myofibrils, and each myofibril is packed with myosin and actin. Myosin are the thick filaments, actin are the thin filaments. They overlap in such a way that we get the stripes. Here we would have a dark stripe, this would be a light stripe. These proteins interact and slide across each other and each sarcomere will then shorten. As each sarcomere in a muscle cell shortens, the entire muscle cell shortens. Muscles are attached to bones by connective tissue, usually by tendons, and muscles cross at least one joint. When muscles contract, they pull on bones. Muscles never push, they always pull. Because they then cross a joint, whenever the muscles shorten, the bones move. One bone moves when the muscle contracts. This is called the insertion of the muscle. This is the movable bone. The other bone remains stable. This is known as the origin of the muscle. This is the immovable bone. There are several different types of joint movements. Flexion, extension, and hyperextension are front-to-back movements. Abduction and adduction are side-to-side -side movements. Circumduction is making a circle. Rotation is rotating on a long axis. Pronation and supination are special movements of the hand. And dorsiflexion and plantar flexion are special movements of the foot. So here you see flexion, extension, and hyperextension. Notice how these are front-to-back movements. We're making the angle of a joint smaller if it's flexion. So here the shoulder, this angle is getting smaller. Here at the knee, this angle is getting smaller, so that's flexion. Extension is increasing the angle, so as we increase the angle or straighten out the knee, that's extension of the knee. Hyperextension is whenever we go beyond anatomical position, so here is hyperextension of the arm. Here we see the head. This is the extension of the head when it's in its standard position. Flexion of the neck when we bend the head forward and hyperextension when we bend backwards. Abduction and adduction are movements away from midline. When you abduct someone, you take them away. So abduction is movement away from the midline. Adduction is movement toward the midline. You're adding something back to the midline. 
With circumduction, the end of the bone draws a circle. Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion have to do with the foot. Dorsiflexion is pointing your toes upward. Plantar flexion is pointing your toes downward. You're standing on tiptoe. Supination and pronation are movements of the hand. In supination, your palms are pointed upward as though you're holding a bowl of soup and asking for more. In pronation, your palms are facing downward. Rotation has to do with movement along a long axis. So when you shake your head no, you are rotating your neck. Now on a limb, if you move the limb and rotate it toward the outside, that's lateral rotation. If you rotate the limb inwardly, that's called medial rotation. Sometimes muscle names can help you identify what they are or where they are. One of the things you may hear is the direction of the muscle fibers. Rectus means the fibers run straight. Oblique means the fibers run diagonally. Sometimes a muscle is named based on its relative size. Maximus would be a large muscle. Minimus would be a small muscle. The muscle may be named for its location. For example, the temporalis muscle lies over the temporal bone of the skull. The number of origins may also be included in the name. Biceps would mean two heads or two points of origin. Triceps, three points of origin. Quadriceps, four points of origin. The location of the origin and insertion may be included in the name. The sternocleidomastoid muscle originates on the sternum and the clavicle, so that's sterno and clido. It inserts on the mastoid process of the skull. The shape of the muscle may be used. Deltoid is triangular, and we may even use the action of the muscles. The adductor group in the thigh will adduct the leg. Let's look at where a few muscles are located in the body. The obicularis oculi encircles the eye. It's a circular muscle. Oculi is near the eye. When this muscle contracts, it closes the eye. It lets you wink. The orbicularis oris is a circular muscle around the mouth. This one causes you to pucker your lips. This is the one you use when you kiss. The frontalis muscle is the large, broad muscle on your forehead. The sternocleidomastoid is only partially seen here. This is the end that's attached to the mastoid process of the skull. It disappears under this muscle. We'll see this again later so we can get a better look at this muscle. The masseter is a muscle in your cheek. This one helps elevate the mandible. You use this to close your mouth. And the zygomaticus is attached to the corner of your mouth and to the zygomatic bone. This is the one that lets you smile. The sternocleidomastoid is seen here a little better. Here you can see how it comes down to the sternum and the clavicle. This muscle, when it contracts, lets you flex the neck. The pectoralis major is this large chest muscle. When this muscle contracts, it lets you bring your arm across your chest. This is a movement you do whenever you're opening a door, for example. The rectus abdominis is this front muscle of your abdominal muscles. This is the muscle that lets you flex the trunk. The deltoid muscle is this large triangular muscle in your shoulder. This one is the one that helps you abduct your arm. The biceps brachii is the muscle here in the front of your arm. When your arm is in the supinated position, it allows you to flex at the elbow. The quadriceps is actually a group of four muscles. This is the muscle that helps you extend the knee. The gastrocnemius is this large fleshy calf muscle. When you contract this muscle, it crosses not only the knee joint, but also the ankle joint. This lets you point your toe, or plantar flex your foot, as well as flex your knee. Here you see the deltoid from the back. This muscle is the trapezius, this large kite-shaped muscle. This muscle helps you pull your shoulders back. It also helps you keep your head erect. Latissimus dorsi is this large muscle that wraps around your side. This will help you extend your upper arm and help you draw your arm across your back. The triceps brachii is the large muscle on the back of your arm. This is the one that helps you extend your arm at the elbow. The gluteus maximus is the large muscle of your hip. This muscle helps you extend your leg. It also helps you medially rotate your leg. And the gluteus medius is a smaller muscle. This one helps you abduct your leg and laterally rotate your leg. The hamstrings group right here is a group of three muscles. The hamstrings will help you flex your knee and will help you extend your thigh. And here's the gastrocnemius seen from the back. Here you can see how it's a very large fleshy muscle. Here's the deltoid and the pectoralis and there's the biceps brachii. 
Deep to the biceps brachii is a smaller muscle called the brachialis. This muscle assists the biceps brachii in flexing your arm. Here's the latissimus dorsi coming around the side, and here's the triceps brachii on the back of your arm. There's a group of muscles attached to your scapula and to the top of your humerus. These are known as the rotator cuff muscles. There are four of them. Three of them are on the back side of the scapula. One is on the underside of the scapula. And these all help hold your humerus into your shoulder joint. They help you rotate your arm. Your abdominal muscles are in several layers. The outermost layer, the straight layer, is the rectus abdominis. And then you have a group of external obliques that come down and they actually kind of go under the rectus abdominis. If we peel back the external obliques, we will see another set of oblique muscles, but this time they're going in the other direction. These are the internal obliques. And if we peel those back, there's a group of muscles that go straight across. These are known as the transversus abdominis. The external obliques, the internal obliques, and the transversus abdominis all help keep your abdominal contents compressed. Here's the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius, and there's a closer look at the hamstring group. The quadriceps group is actually made of four muscles. You can see three here on the surface. The fourth one is underneath this rectus femoris. These are the muscles that help you extend your knee. The sartorius is this diagonal muscle right here. This is the muscle that lets you sit cross-legged. And then you have a group of muscles here on the inner thigh. These compose the adductor group, so these will help pull the thigh toward the midline. As we look at the lower leg, the tibialis anterior is the muscle that's right there in front of your leg. This is your shin muscle. We have the fibularis longus. The soleus is a very flat muscle that is deep to the gastrocnemius. Here you can see how the gastrocnemius crosses the knee and the ankle joint, so it would be involved in flexing the knee and in plantar flexing the foot.